good morning everybody today is um saturday june 19th juneteenth which we just got a holiday for but i'm not going to talk about that right now so you may wonder may be wondering what i'm doing i am actually um making a ant repellent concoction um i got this recipe from Callie Cam last year and it worked. Only thing is last year I put a little too much water in it and it came out a little soupy. But as soon as I put the paste on the cardboard and laid it down for the ants, it worked. It worked right away. So this morning I actually got up and I added um, soil and bone meal to my tomatoes and my um, eggplants this morning because the roots were coming up. Give me just a moment, you guys. Okay, I always forget to make sure that the volume is up so you guys can hear me. So what you do is you add one cup of borax which we all know you can use for cleaning. No, no, no. Rewind, let me say it right. One cup of sugar to one third cup of borax. You mix it up and then you slowly add in water to make a paste. And then you take the paste and you put it on your cardboard pieces and you put it around your garden where you think ants are. I'm actually seeing little holes or ant colonies coming up in my garden. And you may have remembered on one of my other videos, I said that I I feel like I live on top of an ant colony. Um, I, I feel like I literally do. And when I was putting um, the additional soil on the tomatoes, which I still need to add more, you saw ants and they were getting something out of the soil and they were working early this morning. So I got to get on the ants, okay? So I also have these old label things. If I have enough, I'm going to put some of the um, paste on here and put them on the ground. So again, one cup of sugar to one third cup of borax. Why do you say that? Because you don't want the ants to sense the borax. What happens is the ants take the paste, piece by piece, because they're workers, back to their um, home, and then they slowly die. I've been seeing a lot of ants, and when you see a lot of ants, it means you got aphids somewhere. I do not want to have aphids or anything on my tomato plants. So, Let's go ahead and get this started right here. So I'm gonna slowly add the water and you wanna make a paste. So that's why you slowly add the water. And the water is just like running through here. I don't think I'll have to add any more, you guys. And I, you don't want too much water. Yeah, and it makes a thick old paste like it's doing right now. In fact, let me get my gloves and when I'm putting this on here. Do that. Yeah, last year I did this. Oh boy, I added way too much water on accident. It just kind of poured and boy, was it runny. But those ants went crazy over it. They went crazy. And again, this is from Callie Kim. Callie Kim has been on YouTube a long time. Um, I really like her. Um, she's been doing this a long time. So she's one of the tubers that I, YouTubers that I trust. Also, for her summer edition, she has um, usually at 12 o'clock on Mondays. She um, she has a live, and she's going over container gardening. She's going over 
um, tomato shading. She went over shading your garden. She has shade off all over her garden right now. And that's because we're both in South, Southern California. I don't have, I do have um, shade cloth, but um, right now I don't have any out, even though it's been hot. My, my vegetables and everything are, are actually doing pretty good. I get out every night and water them. I did see some mushrooms with the um, with the tomato plants, and I've seen mushrooms because I've been overwatering. But I don't care. Some people water twice a day. I come out and I I drench my garden beds um, when the um, when the shade starts coming in. Okay, so where's my little clicker? You guys know I always lose the remote, right? Where is my little clicker? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, start putting the concoction on the cardboard and lay them out and then I'm going to show you because most likely these ants are going to go crazy for this paste. Okay, so this is in the tomato bed. There's one ant right there and you probably can't see them but there's ants kind of scouting around it. Oh. There's about two, three ants right there. It's a good one. This is by my okra. What you do is you lay the paste on the cardboard in an area where you see lots of ant, kind of in their pathway, and they'll and they'll attach on. They will attach on, you guys. They love it. I think I'm going to move this one up some because I don't see anybody trying to get to it. Just trying to put that in their way. We're not latching on here, but they, they may get it and latch on. As you can see, that's a little ant hole right there. I'm gonna try, I see something coming over. Let's see. They're coming near it but nothing has latched on yet. We'll see you guys, I'll let you know. Got a couple right here in the cucumber bed. They're latching on. Look, this is the other side of the cucumber bed. Look at them, right there. And some over here. I'm telling y'all, it's like crack to them. It's like the fly trap to the flies. Okay, everybody. So, the big thing here is that you have to put the paste um, when you, you know, see a lot of ants, put it in their pathway and then they'll latch on. And I see a beautiful hummingbird. Let me see if I can around. There he is. He's on. He's flown away. Anyway, he was on the flowers. Now, let me turn this around again. I've taken the netting off of the tomatoes. Um, the hummingbird is a lot happier I did that, and so am I. This morning I had to go and put some zip ties right here because this was leaning. So I try to keep them straight. It's like they're forming their own little cage system. And so every time I see one leaning, I attach it to another cage and just bring it back in. Also, I did add soil to the eggplants um, this morning and I watered them. Now, I, technically I didn't have to water them, but because I added more soil to the tomatoes and the eggplants, I went ahead and, and watered them some more. And then when I saw the ants, I said, let me turn this around. I'm like, I better go make this ant repellent. Um, I'm gonna put some more out around everywhere and um, that'll be it. I think I am gonna come back out later and um, let me turn this around. Um, plant the peppers here that I want because the um, the okra is starting to grow more and look, I'm getting slugs. Something's coming in here and eating you guys. So I really didn't want to put diatomaceous earth, 
but I see ants and I'm gonna put some more ant traps in here but I'm gonna have to cut those holes off and I might have to sprinkle a little diatomaceous earth around in here too but that's it for today it's getting hot it's after 8 a.m. I got out here about 7 did what I have to do today you see the bees I don't know if you can see the bees flying but the bees are out I want the pollinators to do their thing I want to get out of their way and I'm gonna put some more ant traps out and then um, call it for today it's already 80 degrees out here according to my phone and I just kind of want to get done and go in the house or maybe surprise my mom take her to the mall she wants to go to William Sonoma and do some stuff so I'm letting her rest she had dialysis yesterday so I let her get her rest do my thing and then um, you know hey you know the thing about the garden is when you keep it up all the time you check it it it's good it stays good and then you have days where maybe you can skip a day from you know checking it um, I don't have a drip system out and actually with the water being the way it is I'm kind of happy I don't have a drip system out because I can kind of control how I water um, everything check it only water when it needs it and um, and and that's it so okay I'm gonna go ahead get the rest of my day started and I will talk with you guys later hey everybody I just got a message from mr. green thumb he said that pomegranates like a lot of Sun and to put my pomegranate in the Sun right away and let the top two layers of it dry out he said it would immediately stop dropping leaves and it makes sense he's smart because here's my other pomegranate the ever sweet it doesn't drop leaves at all and, and it's in the Sun all day so I'm sitting this baby one next to this one I might just even put it like right here let me see where I could put it in there a couple of flowers have dropped off but it has this on it I'm just trying to see where I can put it in a good place sorry I'm gonna put it right there all right we're gonna see what happens because normally I don't water my trees every day but when I got it it was so so dry that it did come back when I watered it but it looks like I overwatered it and I just been sitting in a patio which actually my patio does get Sun but not direct Sun so this is gonna be good it looks like I'm gonna have to come and prune this stuff right here not today though it's too hot it's branching off other little trees there oh and this is falling off oh no it's, it ain't fell off yet okay you guys I just thought I'd tell you that as soon as I saw that comment I was like yes so I'm sitting next to the other pomegranate and eventually I'm gonna put that in the ground let me turn it back around and I don't know what to name her yet but she's going to make it with good friends like mr. green thumb the green from the green thumb channel helping me out you guys all right have a good day hey everybody so I just got through water in the yard I came out a little bit early and I planted some more peppers up in here I planted medium peppers um, hot Anaheim chili peppers and I forgot the peppers that you put in salads the nice green ones so I also went through <clears throat> the um, the okra and the peppers that are already here and oh I see I, I missed a couple I'll have to come back and chop those off cut some um, leaves um, I had to cut the okra a lot there were lots of holes and then I came and sprayed everything with neem oil 
and then I made sure I tried my best not to hit the leaves with water but I just water it water it water it water it until you see the water comes out that's what I do I water and water until the water comes out of the bottom of the um, garden beds so that's what I did over here um, I don't remember if I mentioned um, that I came over here and I cut I, I probably did earlier in the video earlier today that I came and cut some of these leaves off so that I can make sure that I can get back here the only one I didn't cut was this one because as you can see it has two tomatoes on it and when I have fruit um, ripening and growing I really try not to mess with those branches I tried to pull it up to tie it and it was just a little bit too stiff so I just I just left it alone I don't want to mess with that but as you can see like I got tomatoes growing here tomatoes growing there um, I probably got some tomatoes growing on this plant in the middle but I can't really <laughs> I can't really see it look at these tomatoes right here sorry right there um, yeah, so I got a lot of tomatoes growing and I didn't want to hurt those branches and I make sure the branches that I was cutting that I wasn't cutting off too much, but I have to get back here. I have to be able to get um, behind this garden bed and check everything. Um, I visibly cannot see any hornworms and it's so weird because I believe that I saw like a yellow jay and red jay bird. Um, been flying through here like it had um, they had yellow on their chest and red on their chest and when I looked up what birds like to eat hornworms those were some of the ones um, so hey I'm just letting them fly everywhere right now something I wanted you to see here let me turn it around I noticed this marking on the tomato I don't think it's anything because usually when you get um, the um, rotten bottoms is at the bottom but I'm gonna be um, looking at that tomato I really shouldn't be touching the plant without gloves for some reason I can kind of eat the tomatoes but the plants are weird they make me itch really really weird there's some tomatoes so there the tomatoes are growing pretty good so I'm happy about that um, but that's really about what I did today. Um, actually looking at these romas too. Um, and it looks like I might have to cut some leaves on the bottom of this and also on the bottom of my cherry tomatoes. Let's see. Yeah, cause that leaf looks bad. <gasps> I got a red tomato, yes! A red tomato, I'm so excited. Oh, finally a red one. Wow. I'm excited about that one red tomato. Isn't that weird? Okay. Come over here. And no, no red ones over here yet, but I see some messed up leaves um, that need to be cut, but that's okay. That is all right. I'm gonna leave that one red tomato there because it looks more orange than red. <clears throat> and then if we come over here to the cucumbers, let me walk around here. Oh, let me walk around. I had to tie up this one because it was fallen and then noticed a cucumber when I did that. And I had to tie up, was it this one? Yeah, I tied it up. Was it this one? It was this one. I had to tie up this one. So, the leaves are nice and green. They're really growing. And I'm just praying that the cucumbers still keep coming and get bigger. Um, I'll be having to cut off some more leaves because you see this? This is a bug inside of the leaf. It tracks inside of the leaf. And I have a couple of leaves like that. I haven't. Let me look under here. Yeah, I don't see any aphids which is good, which is really, really good. 
my grapevine is still growing I'm gonna have to tack it back some more um, no grapes this year it's the first year I had it so that's okay I'm okay with that I went and double water the corn today look at that you guys I mean they are really growing and so are the sunflowers the so the sunflowers are growing day by day they have now outgrown the zinnias in the middle so um, that's a good thing it's still really hot out here today it was better for me to come early in the morning when it was 70 than out here now but that's okay and just again always check on the watermelons I may have to start slowing down on watering the watermelons so that the, sug the sugars can absorb inside but that's going to be kind of hard because I know that I'm going to get some more watermelons growing in the back of the watermelon patch so I have to weigh my options here um, yeah but there everything's growing really fast um, tomorrow is a feeding day so I'll be um, feeding everything and I went and I soaked the squash bed very good because now the leaves are popped up but these leaves were like like doing that oops the leaves are doing that they they were really dry and now they're popping back up because I went and soaked them really well looks like I might have to tie some loofah up over here let's see this loofah's like hanging yeah I might have to bring this closer and once you bring it closer the tenules these things just go and start wrapping around so yeah let me turn this around no wait let's go over here oh more flowers and I saw a lot of bees over here so I'm sure like stuff got pollinated um, this definitely got pollinated right here like the flowers dying off and this a bulb so I'm thinking oh I'm showing you something in my this right here I was saying this definitely got pollinated because the flower died and this is bulbed right there also I'm thinking about tomorrow morning I may come out and harvest this and this these two containers right here because they've been growing potatoes for a long time and I, I think it's time to go ahead and harvest these two so let me turn it back around that's about it for today um, I think I just saw a bee sorry yeah that's about it for today you guys saw that I put the pomegranate the baby pomegranate tree by the big one um, let me turn it around sorry it looks like it's doing pretty good thanks to my friend the, the, um, the on the the green thumb channel um, he told me he said hey hey sis you know let the pomegranate dry about two-thirds of the way and put it directly in the Sun and the leaves will stop dropping off because they don't want to take that much water and um, that's what I did I set it out here it's looking okay I'm gonna leave it alone because it's next to big mama one right here and then by next year I should be moving the Santa Rosa plum and this pear tree and probably planting that pomegranate instead of behind it next right here and planting another all-in-one almond right here and also I'll be moving this peach tree too um, and putting it to the other side of the yard so that's about it uh, I'm gonna go in the house and enjoy the rest of my day me and my mom actually watched Cru Cruella today it was very good we watched it on the Disney Channel excellent movie and that's about it so as I always tell you oops, there's a big old piece of light there okay so please find peace within yourself and please be peaceable with others and have a good evening and I love you all peace